I'm here in our eucalyptus trial, and I'm gonna spend a little bit of time today talking about the different varieties and species of eucalyptus that we offer. Eucalyptus is a genus that contains hundreds of different species, and so there is incredible diversity in this crop. And there are really only a few of these species that are known and cultivated and used for uh, cut flower or foliage use. Um, for our trials here at Johnny's Seeds, we we start we put our plants in the ground in mid-May after our after the kind of the danger of last frost has passed, and um, it takes a long time for these plants to bulk up and put on enough growth and um, become sturdy enough so that we can cut and rehydrate them for cut flower use. So we don't usually start harvesting off of our plants in our trial until. Uh, mid to late August, um, but they do, once they start producing, they're in really productive, beautiful, and abundant, and uh, I'm going to take just a little bit of time to walk through the different varieties and species that we offer. One thing that is, um, that could be helpful to know about eucalyptus, again, because there are so many different species, um, there are also a lot of common names in use for eucalyptus as well, and so sometimes you might see um, different common names applied to the same species and it can be a little bit confusing depending on um, either where you're sourcing your seed or who you're selling your foliage to. Um, there are some, sometimes the same common name can be used for different species. So the best way to um, make sure that you're purchasing the variety that you want or that um, to make sure that, you know, whoever you're selling it to, you're giving them what they expect is to understand and be familiar with the species name of the eucalyptus that you want to grow. So as I go through these varieties, I'll be sharing the common name that we use, um, but also the species name of these varieties. And so hopefully that will help um, make sure that you get the product that you want and that your customers get the product that they want. Um, when because it can it can be a little bit confusing. So this variety right here is lemon bush eucalyptus. That's the common name. The scientific name is eucalyptus citriodora, and uh, both the the lemon bush and the common name and the citriodora and the scientific name speak to one of the standout features of this variety, which is its very strong lemony fragrance. So it has a little bit of a different fragrance than kind of the classic eucalyptus varieties. It's very strong and citrusy and um, kind of reminiscent of a citronella candle. So it's a, it's a wonderful scent. And a couple of other things to note about this variety are the plant habit. You can see these plants are quite upright and tall. Um, it also has a little bit more of a elongated kind of arrowhead shaped leaf. And then the color is also different kind of than the classic eucalyptus. So it's more of a sage green leaf with this really distinct uh, reddish hue on the new growth, which is really attractive and a really nice contrast. Um, these stems tend to have a little bit more movement and aren't quite as stiff as varieties like um, Silver Dollar or Baby Blue. So it's a, just a little bit of a different look, uh, highly fragrant, uh, quite tall and upright and productive. So this is Lemon Bush or Eucalyptus Citriodora. So this variety right here is called Baby Blue Bouquet. And this is all, um, Similar to Baby Blue, this is also Eucalyptus pulverulenta, but this is a little bit more of a refined selection of the E. pulverulenta. And so what you will see here compared to Baby Blue or compared to Silver Dollar is that these plants are a little bit more compact, still semi-upright, but you'll see um, a higher degree of uniformity here and also noticeably smaller leaves and leaves that are more densely packed along the stems. And so uh, hopefully you can see that here from the plants and also from what I'm holding up here on my left, this is silver dollar. So you can see those large kind of silver dollar sized leaves stacked on the stems. And then this in my right hand is baby blue bouquet. And so here again, hopefully you can see the difference. They're just really uniformly uh, stacked up these stems, a little bit stiffer stems too, whereas the silver dollar can sometimes have a little bit more movement to it. Um, otherwise, 
very similar and still kind of falls in that kind of classic eucalyptus color with the silvery gray leaves, um, similar fragrance to baby blue and to uh, silver dollar. Also, these do to have that kind of waxy substance on the stems and the leaves that you'll notice as you're cleaning the stems. I'll show just as a, for a point of comparison here in my left, this is silver dollar. In my right, this is baby blue bouquet. I think you can hopefully see the differences again between these varieties. It's very similar coloring, but the leaf shape and size is what really distinguishes these varieties as well as uh, the plant habit too. This is a little bit more open, a slightly less vigorous, still semi upright, but um, yeah, just a, a little bit more compact compared to both baby blue and silver dollar. So again, this is baby blue bouquet, eucalyptus pulverulenta. This variety here is silver dollar eucalyptus or eucalyptus cinerea. This is kind of the the classic eucalyptus that you would that most people think of when you say eucalyptus and this is the um, it has that really uh, distinct silvery gray leaf color it has um, these big round leaves that are stacked like silver dollars up the stem it has long strong sturdy branches uh, quite productive and again, this is just the like kind of the, the classic eucalyptus. It has that eucalyptus fragrance and uh, it also has kind of that waxy white or silvery substance on the leaves and on the stems. You will notice that your hands will get a little bit sticky as you're cleaning these. But again, this is, this is silver dollar um, and the scientific name is eucalyptus cinerea. So this variety here is silver drop or eucalyptus gunii. And this variety presents that sort of, again, the similar uh, blue-green leaf color of uh, kind of the classic eucalyptus, but it does have a very upright plant habit, which you can hopefully see here. It definitely grows more like a tree. So that's something to be aware of. And also it presents um, a little bit of variation in leaf shape and form and color too within this variety. So I find the, this to be a really versatile and great variety to work with for mixed bunches. You are gonna see a little bit of difference in leaf shape and leaf color. It tends to sometimes have a little bit more of the darker green leaf colors showing through compared to varieties like Silver Dollar where the, the leaf color and shape is a little bit more consistent. Um, this variety, Silver Dollar also, or Silver Drop tends to be, um, also have some variation in stem color as well. So stem color can be anywhere from a light green to a little bit of a darker red. And uh, overall, these plants are, are quite productive and tall. And as a point of contrast, um, sometimes it can be confusing because Silver Dollar and Silver Drop both have silver in the name. They are different varieties and different species. And so I'll just uh, make a quick comparison between the two here. So on my right is silver drop. You can see taller plants, um, kind of small, delicate leaves, some vari variability in leaf shape and form, some variability in stem color, uh, but overall very productive, sturdy stems. And then on my left, this is silver dollar. So a little bit more of that silvery color to it. Also a little bit more um, uniformity in leaf size and leaf shape where silver drop tends to have smaller leaves and the stems tend to branch a little bit more. Uh, silver dollar tends to have sort of these more single branches without a lot of, you know, not, not a lot of branching off of here, but just these kind of larger leaves stacked up the stems Whereas Silver Drop, again, has a little bit more variability, a little more branching in the leaves. Um, so just wanna compare and contrast these two varieties here. You can see also the plant habit of Silver Dollar is a little bit more semi-upright and slightly less vigorous than Silver Drop here on my right. So this variety here is Silver Plate or Eucalyptus polyanthemos. This variety is, has an upright habit and uh, the leaf 
form is a little bit different than varieties like silver dollar or baby blue. The leaves, instead of being kind of stacked along one singular stem, they kind of hang alternately off of these dark red stems. Uh, the color contrast between the leaves and the stems in this variety is really interesting. It has the dark red stems and these kind of uh, sage green leaves and almost the leaves are, are large or almost plate-like, hence the name silver plate. Another distinct thing about this variety is the way that the new foliage has this reddish purple hue to it, which is another really nice feature. Um, they, the stems clean and harvest very well. This variety does not have that waxy substance like var that varieties like Silver Dollar have. So that's another nice feature of this variety. And it's, again, it's just a really interesting, unique look for a eucalyptus. This is Silver Plate or Eucalyptus polyanthemus. This variety here is called Small Leaved Gum. That's the common name. The scientific name is Eucalyptus parvula. And this is an interesting variety. I really love the dark kind of forest green color of the leaves in contrast with that dark red stem. So uh, a really nice contrast between leaves and stems, a high degree of uniformity within this variety. And it does have more of a, like a shorter, more compact, almost shrub-like habit. Uh, these take a little bit longer to size up in our trial for our season here in Maine. Um, but once they do get a, a little bit more height on them, between 20 to 36 inches, they produce these really nice stems that are great for design work or for um, smaller mixed bouquets. Again, this is small-leaved gum, eucalyptus parvula. And some of the standout traits about this variety are the uniformity, that nice contrast between the leaf color and the stems and um, the, the productivity of this variety also, even though it is a little bit more on the compact side. So this variety is Bookleaf Malie or Eucalyptus cruziana. And while the plants, as you can see here, are, much, are quite compact, um, these have a unique color and leaf form that make them really well suited for small design work. So some of the things that kind of stand out about this variety are the um, the way that the leaf tips and the new growth takes on almost a pinkish hue. Um, so that's a really nice color contrast to the gray of the leaves. And then they also um, are such a small and kind of delicate little stem. The tips or the new growth can almost look like a rosebud as they're as they're growing or unfolding. And so again, this is a variety that um, just because of its compact size is probably best suited for design work uh, and smaller, uh, smaller floral design work. It's, this is Bookleaf Malie or Eucalyptus cruziana. Just as a point of comparison, probably the variety that's most similar to Bookleaf Malie would be Baby Blue Bouquet. So they both have a little bit of a smaller, Leaf size, a little bit more of a compact habit, but um, you could, the book leaf mallee is much more compact in its habit. And it's also, it also has more of that pink coloring coming through on the new growth. And uh, again, also a little bit more of a even smaller leaf shape and size compared to the baby blue bouquet. This variety is Eucalyptus teratocornis. This is a very tall eucalyptus that you can, hopefully you can see how tall these plants are. This is a fast growing variety and it has um, very much has a tree-like habit. Uh, the branches extend off of a main trunk. Uh, the trunk has a little bit of red coloring, which contrasts really nicely with these green leaves. The leaves have sort of an elongated arrowhead-like shape. Um, and then another, one of the other kind of key features of this variety is that often the new or immature foliage will have this nice dark red color. Uh, this coloring becomes a little more noticeable or pronounced as the weather cools. So you might see more of this red coloring later in the season. Uh, the stems are sturdy and easy to clean. Uh, this is 
not a highly fragrant variety, and it also does not have the kind of waxy coating that some eucalyptus species have. So that makes the stems easier to clean and um, is another kind of nice feature about this variety. You can also see um, the way that the, the leaves sort of hang off the stems. There's a little bit of movement to these stems as well. Uh, overall, an, a kind of an, an interesting and different look for a eucalyptus species than compared to the kind of classic varieties that we're used to, but a really interesting, productive, tall, fast-growing eucalyptus variety. This is Eucalyptus teratocornis. So I'd like to share just a few growing tips for eucalyptus. For growing here in Maine, in zone 5A, or anywhere where you have cold winters, um, eucalyptus, although they are a tree species, they do not survive cold winters. And so we grow them here in Maine as an annual. So we start them from seed every spring. And um, again, because they are a tree species, they take a long time to size up. So for us, we're not usually harvesting off of them until uh, late August and into September. But once we do start harvesting, we can harvest um, typically well into the fall, uh, usually past our first couple of light frosts. So they're a great late season foliage option for us here in Maine. And as far as getting them started in the spring, we typically try to get them in the ground as soon as uh, we're past our last frost date. So for us, that tends to be middle to end of May, we try to transplant. And for seed starting, um, we've had good success. We've trialed many different species of eucalyptus over the years. And in general, we've had good success with starting from them from seed in a germ chamber uh, or germination room where we have controlled temperature and humidity. So temperatures that we found um, work really well for us, typically between 75 and 80 degrees and high humidity in the germ room. And that, we typically see germination on most species within seven to 10, ten days in those conditions. Um, I think it's the, the high heat and humidity and just the consistency of that environment that seems to work well for most eucalyptus varieties that we've trialed. Um, after they pop up in the germ room, we move them out to a greenhouse and allow them to grow on, depending on the cell size that you're using, um, it can be eight to 10 weeks, typically, before they're ready to transplant and go into the ground. One other thing to be aware of with eucalyptus seedlings, they, this is a tree species, so they do develop a taproot, and they, are, um, they can be sensitive at transplanting and also sensitive to things like bumping up. So for us, we try not to have to bump them up. We, what works well for us is sewing them into 128 cell trays and um, then transplanting from those right to the field. But if you do end up uh, bumping them up, just it's something to be mindful of that they have a taproot and are sensitive to root disturbance. So again, uh, just a few growing tips for getting started with eucalyptus. Um, as far as harvest stage for eucalyptus, we wait until the stems have started to get woody and stiffen up. This allows them to rehydrate better. And so if you, that for us, that point typically comes mid to late August for most varieties when we can start harvesting. If you harvest before the stems get woody, you may find you have trouble rehydrating those stems and they tend to droop faster. Once the stems do have that woody layer to them, um, as long as you're rehydrating them appropriately, they should last for quite a while and um, be a great source of foliage through the uh, late summer and into the fall. Thank you for watching. I know eucalyptus is a really important crop for a lot of growers. I hope that this video today helped you understand a little bit more the differences between the varieties and the species that we offer. If you're looking for more information about eucalyptus, please check out our website. We have a lot more information there as well as photos about the different varieties and species that we carry.